Hey everyone, this is Casual Fanatic. Film reviews without the shoes. I'm Luca, your casual viewer. And I'm Cayman, your fanatic. <laughs> Alright, I, I have to tell you something real quick. What? I... I don't know what just happened, but like my brain stopped working for a second. And so when you started the intro, I like went, I like had a miniature panic where my brain was like, wait, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And then I just like started talking. <laughs> like <laughs> really? my mouth went and I was like, what am I saying right now? <laughs> but, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. I was Let's like, go. I thought I was prepared, but then I wasn't prepared, but my body got me covered. Yeah. Your body went through the motions, bro. It was like, don't worry, I know what to say. I was like, <laughs> okay, because I don't. <laughs> He's like, hold my beer, I got this. <laughs> Damn, Cayman, well, how are you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty good. Um, Getting close to Christmas, getting close to surprise. I don't know if I've talked about that on the podcast yet, but uh, some, sorry, I'm really, I'm struggling today. <laughs> Is so, it one of those days? I don't know. I feel like I've been fine the rest of the day. Just all of a sudden, just hit me. Um, but yeah, so for for surprise, I'm building a like a handcrafted gift, and then there will be like a a store bought gift inside of it. So it's like a, supposed to be a bit more personal, and it's also sort of like a secret Santa sort of thing. I, like I said, I may have already said this before on the podcast, but everyone in the family gets assigned another person, and then you like handcraft a gift for that person, and so it's it's very intimate i would say <laughs> very thoughtful yeah yeah Wait, who's your person this time well yeah i i was gonna say i can't tell you but i guess by the time this episode comes out surprise will be over so um i have melanie and i'm making, okay i'm making her like a tiny a tiny little house and sydney's gonna bark at something um and, you're making her a little house yeah i'm making her a little house and then because she's been renovating her her own house recently um but yeah, but yeah so she's so been renovating she's her been house renovating and... so i'm gonna make her a, a, like a tiny little house and then make her like do little renovations in the mini house <laughs> i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> when you say you're making her a small house like what are, what are the what dimensions are we talking here um well i print rather than like trying to like paint it or color on it or something i just like printed out some little shapes that i'm going to stick on the outside for decoration um and so the house is going to be made like about as big as a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper okay like, okay like in terms of the footprint yeah and is it a 3d thing i'm guessing right yeah i'm going to use some of my old material from school heck yeah that's awesome your old material and old skills yeah well we'll see how how up to date those skills are <laughs> always good to to brush some dust off yeah that's awesome and then and then what's your like actual gift and then the the actual gift i got her some like feel good like there some bath salts and a um i think like a little fizzy thing that you can also put in the bath and then a nice scented candle and they're all like all three of them are from like it's matching brands so it's like a little set yeah oh that's awesome yeah oh yeah well, on uh, my end, I have been, you know, also getting ready for the holidays and whatnot, getting yeah. people, you know, family stuff ready. Today I was cleaning my house. Yesterday I was out skiing because my family's coming in. Yeah, you've been skiing a lot um, recently. Man, I've been skiing every weekend, at least I, once. I know. Yeah, I've been I've been getting my money's worth out of that, that That's pass good. I bought. Yeah, so I think with the amount of times I've gone now, it's paid off basically. Nice. And so nice. anything after this is like, you know, free making, just making it cheaper for me. Free. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is awesome. But yeah, That's my cool. legs are kind of dead today and, but yeah, it's a, it's a good time. And I also just came back from, from one of my friends. Um, he opened up a Korean, um, hot dog, uh, I guess restaurant you could say. Is it like a, um, like a brick and, and mortar location? No, it's like, it's like in a, you know, like one of those strip mall kind of things on the outside of like you drive past and there's like this long building with like tons gotcha, of different gotcha. stores in it. It's kind of like that. And so you like yeah, rent he out like, of space. Right, right, right. Yeah. And he, and it's really freaking good. Like highly recommend it. If you live in Denver, reach out and I'll let you know what, 
you know, where it is and what's it called, what it's called. And, you know, highly recommend to go there, bro. They have like these, they're like, they're called, it's called a Korean hot dog, but it's kind of like, um, you know, the hot dog on the steak that's breaded around it. Yeah. But like they have so more like a corn dog, like, kind of like, yeah, kind of very much like a corn dog, but like a fancy premium version corn dog of like, you can have mozzarella corn dog. Then there's one that's the, uh, um, well, my brain just farted too. Holy shit. <laughs> I literally just lost the word for everything in my life. Um, something about today, man. Yeah, something about today. No, uh, it had um, like squid. It, it's like a squid juice octopus. What is it called? The ink? Squid ink? Yeah. Yeah, octopus ink. Like it was the breaded part was like black because of that ink. That's kind of um, crazy. Yeah, it was. It was. I had like three of them and Sydney had one and they're like super cheap. Like the most expensive one, which is like. A jumbo dog with mozzarella and cheese and um like uh, regular potatoes on the outside and then on top of that jalapenos with more cheese dude yeah. that was like six dollars and That's it was bad. massive yeah so they they range between like three to six dollars and i mean within two you're already full so cool so it's a good, good time and then also uh the i believe the world cup final was this morning oh right yeah the world dude did you watch it I did not. Oh my gosh. Well, let me tell you the world cup final was today and it was probably the best soccer game I think I've ever watched. Um, it was with Brazil and Argentina. Yeah. And I was rooting for Argentina and Argentina ended up winning, but I mean, they went overtime and then they started doing PK shootouts. How close um, was it? And not only that, say what? So how close was it? It was very fucking close. Very close. I mean, Argentina won by two in the PKs, but um, during the actual like the the main game, Argentina was like in the lead by two, and then Mbappe, which is one of the best French players they have, yeah, um, scored two goals on Argentina within two minutes. That's insane. Yeah, and then they came back, and then uh, Messi scored another goal, and then in like the hundred ninth minute, um, France scored again. So it was three three, and then it went to overtime. Wait, France? Oh, sorry, dude. I'm telling you, man, it's the day. I don't know what's going on. Brazil scored in right. like the 109th minute um, to even it out. Third team comes out of nowhere. It's France. It's France. <laughs> no, dude. Oh, not France. I don't know why I said France. Yikes. But no, it was an amazing game. Um, and then Messi is basically now crowned as like the greatest of all time in soccer. Yeah. Because he has like every single thing you can get as a soccer player and multiples of them. Um, yeah, and the World Cup was wild. the only thing that was missing under his belt. Cool. Yeah, it was a great time. And now we're here. And now we are here. Post World Cup. Post World Cup. Post Argentina world. winning. <laughs> Say what? So it's a different world. All of a sudden, yeah, it's a different world. Brighter blue skies, you know, like their jerseys. No, I'm kidding. But what are we here talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about the 2019 movie Knives Out. It was direct, direct, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> so done <laughs> this was, is gonna be a rough one man <laughs> it was written and directed by ryan johnson and it stars quite a few famous people i think um christopher Plummer has won an academy award and three of the other people i want to say jamie lee curtis michael shannon and tony collette were nominated for an oscar for other works uh, we also have oh. Chris Evans, Don Johnson, Anna de Armas, and Daniel Craig as uh, Detective Benoit Blanc. Yeah. I mean, that's a Blanc. fucking group right there. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and start off by letting the audience know this movie had an estimated budget of $40 million, which is honestly pretty, pretty small, which makes sense. I mean, like there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of huge things happening in this movie. A lot of it takes place at one house. Right. But yeah, they is a pretty pretty good movie for such a small budget and it ended up making 312 million. Wow. So they That's did a fucking They did very well. They did ultra well. Do you think it's because of the cast that they did this well? I mean, because there oh, wasn't a movie like this prior. For sure. I think that the cast has a lot to do with it and also um the it's just a i feel like people like good murder mysteries i feel like yeah. we don't really get a whole lot of them i mean i guess there's like um this 
So this movie is getting a sequel in, later this week on Netflix. Uh, oh, it, called, are they really? Called Glass Onion. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. Uh, oh. There's going to be another another mystery with Benoit Blanc on December 23rd on Netflix. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, But other than... So there's like this... I guess now it's a series and then there have been two films with the like murder on the Orient Express and then death on the Nile. I don't know if you've seen either of those. I, I've seen a lot of commercials for the Orient Express one, but I haven't seen either of them. No. Okay. Yeah. But I, honestly, these movies and those movies are the only like Agatha Christie style murder mysteries that are really like in recent movie history. I feel like it's not a, it's not as popular of a genre as it used to be. And I don't know why that is. Like, they're so good and they keep you, like, really thinking and on your seat, uh, on yeah. the edge of your seat. I don't know. I, I enjoy this type of this type of movie. I think these are so much better than, like, stupid horror movies. But, Luca, what did you think of Knives Out? I think Knives Out was and is a great movie to sit down and watch with anyone from, like, kids to adult um it might be a little bit more intense for kids because like honestly like there are not there aren't that many jokes in this movie if any um but i think overall i had a good time watching it um i was interested i was intrigued i was um entertained and that's really all i can ask from a movie and it wasn't also it wasn't too long um which i i do enjoy a movie that doesn't go for you know it was two hours and ten minutes yeah yeah, which I think that's like an appropriate length for a movie. Um, once it uh, starts getting this, to like the almost three hour mark, I'm like a little bit, you know. Was this your first time seeing it or have you seen it before? So I actually started the movie and I was not sure. But within 10 minutes, I, I knew I had seen it, um, but I didn't exactly know what had happened in it. Okay. But then maybe 40 minutes into the movie, I was like, oh, yeah, this is I remember things now. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I, I wasn't sure because this is only my second time watching it. And I wasn't yeah. sure if it would be like less interesting because I already know what happens. But it wasn't. It was still super intriguing. And I like I feel almost like there was it was a different experience watching it a second time because you see I agree. like the motivations from different characters and like things happen that you probably didn't notice the first time. Right. And so it's like, yeah, yeah. When I started watching it the second time, I, 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 again, granted, I almost didn't remember seeing it at first. But then when I started getting into it, I remembered like the details and I started paying attention to other things. Yeah. Of like kind of like how LeBlanc is putting things together, because, I, you know, when you see it the first time, you, you don't exactly know the full picture. But then I feel like for me, at least watching it the second time, I could understand how LeBlanc works and how. You got like more you know, trying to find the donut stuff. within the donut. Yeah, <laughs> the donut. Oh, that's yeah. another thing is like you said, there's no jokes, but I feel like there's maybe not like there's not really any like uh, like stand up comedy kind of jokes. But yeah, there's uh, yeah. And like there's just funny things that happen like the whole the donut speech. It was hilarious. And like there's a rather funny car chase in the movie. And there's just like situations that that are humorous without it yeah. being actually people telling jokes. Right. And like that one time when LeBlanc was in the car and that was a funny thing that happened relatively at the end. I don't know if you remember. But let us take a moment here and step into the boxing ring. I believe you went first last time. Okay. So I think it's my turn this time. All right. Let's see here. It sucks because like I, I don't remember all of their names. Um, I need to like do a character list before I, we get into this stuff <laughs> just for my Perhaps. own sake. So I can like call out people's names. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I, I don't even remember what year it is. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. I don't remember his Who? name. The main old guy. Harlan Thromby. Harlan? Yeah. Harlan. Yeah. Harlan. Okay, cool. Thank you. Taking place in a... Family home. Harlan Thromby is a multimillionaire who has been taking care of his family for the last year, few years. Unbeknownst to the family and everyone around him, Harlan dies on his birthday night as an apparent suicide. Mr. Blanc, a detective, is hired to um, 
figure out the mystery behind Arlen's death with the help of Martha, the family's nurse. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. I'm going to say um, private investigator Benoit Blanc is hired to look into the death of Harlan Thromby, who apparently committed suicide on his 85th birthday. But he finds that the Thromby family is more trouble than they're worth. Okay. Now let's hear the real deal. All right. This says, when renowned crime novelist Harlan Thromby is found dead at his estate just after his 85th birthday, the inquisitive and debonair detective Benoit Blanc is mysteriously enlisted to investigate. From Harlan's dysfunctional family to his devoted staff, Blanc sifts through a web of red herrings and self-serving lies to uncover the truth behind Harlan's untimely death. Hmm. It's a lot of details. That's a lot of details, yeah. Um, I did specify his 85th birthday. You did, and I just forgot how old he was. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember what you said. Oh, rude. Well, it's just like hard, you know? Because <laughs> I was no, yeah, trying to you. think of my own thing. Um, Did you mention his family? I did mention his family, yeah. Okay. I mentioned Martha. I don't know if that thing mentioned Martha or not. No, so that's actually, uh, it, it does not mention Martha. So you've added information that's not here. Yeah. Although they added so much that I didn't even have. Um, he also only said his first name. I said his first and last name. Yep. <laughs> it's the small details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're taking, you're taking my, um, my lack of names. Yeah, that against you, bro. <laughs> Honestly, next time just pull up pull up a cast list. Oh, I should. I just don't want to cheat. I don't want to see something that I don't mean to see, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you got it then. Just barely. Just barely. Sure. sure. Alrighty. <laughs> Let's take a quick break and then we will come back to discuss some fun things about this movie. Heck yeah. back <laughs> super fun uh spoiler warning yeah i think so where neither of us get to hear what it truly sounds like <laughs> Unt until it actually happens yeah true ladies and gentlemen and others <laughs> if you don't want this movie to be spoiled go listen nice that's all i had in me today bro <laughs> listen I, I feel like you got others is an important category I, I agree. I agree. But I feel like saying ladies and gentlemen is just too, you know, exclusionary at the uh, off the get go. I feel like there's another word that I usually would use, but my brain is just so tired today that it didn't work. So excuse the, the listeners that, you know, felt not included, but I said others. So everyone, cats and dogs are included in that as well. Cats so, and dogs. All righty. Well, Cayman, where do you want to start with this movie? I would like to start with the... I guess with with the performances, I think everyone in this movie did just a bang up job and that like I was mentioning earlier, like there were some the, people were just f like entertaining and funny without like doing overtly funny things. Do you know what I mean? Like what? Give us an example. Well, like even just like the entire idea of Daniel Craig's like super southern accent throughout the entire movie is like right that's funny <laughs> but it's, no, it's I like agree. it's not it's like it's played com completely seriously like i mean i guess like ransom makes fun of him a few times but it's never it's never shown like as if he's doing it as a joke like it's just like no that's just his voice right I, at first like i thought he was trying to hit a british accent but then within like from the first line that he started talking to the end of that, you know, whatever he was talking about, it changed from like, for me at least, from like British English to like Texan. Interesting. It was very strange. And then uh, there was another thing that later in the movie that I, when Ransom finally shows up and he is there in the, the sitting room and everyone starts yelling at each other. I heard a line that I didn't hear the first time I watched it, which is when when he's going around the room and telling everyone to eat shit. Yeah. And then uh, Michael Shannon, who plays Walt, 
um at one point in the background you can hear him yelling he he yells i'm not eating one iota of shit and i just thought that was the fucking funniest thing ever (laughs) wait what is an iota just a small piece oh my gosh i did not hear that either yet that's funny yeah i think i think the cast did a wonderful job um one of the main reasons that i actually watched this movie was because of mr blanc and his you know the actor that's playing him yeah um because like i see him as like james bond through and through right but then you know seeing him like taking on other roles as like a detective that's like you know put put out there to be like incredibly smart and like just cunning and all that stuff um it it just works and then this family is just so chaotic yeah um and everyone has such a vastly different personality it just makes it so like enriching to see you know these actors sure but it's depicting like what a real family would be like sometimes you know like some families are actually just like that yeah which i thought was fantastic yeah everyone sort of like you can see especially in the the opening interviews when it keeps like cutting back and forth between different family members and like you can see all of the like tension between them and everyone is kind of like like their family but they all like have their little like group and they're like oh well, we don't talk to, uh, like m- making fun of the the one kid and everyone keeps calling him a nazi or like um right. they have the the argument about immigration on the couch and we see even during the interviews every time they flash back to the the birthday party they like in their memory they see themselves standing next to the the father <laughs> yep yep and so every, all of them are just like in their own world basically yeah yeah, yeah. They, they have their own perception of what reality is and then there's the truth um which i guess you know all those scenarios that they went through we i don't think we ever know who was actually standing next to the you know uh the old guy fuck i forgot his name already um harlan harlan um but uh, you know like they go through these different personalities different you know viewpoints and then mr blanc has to sit there and like really try to work through it all yeah which i think is an incredible skill for for detectives to sit there listen to all these perspectives and like nitpick the things that you know could be true or not true and then put them in a category yeah and i think an, another really interesting thing is um because like this is like this murder mystery it kind of like double it like double surprises you because you, you we find out what happened like 40 minutes into the movie right and then you're like immediately like it turns from like oh we have to find out who killed him to oh we have to fig like and then it turns into a story about marta trying to like not get found out and then it like it, like starts off as a murder mystery and then it's a like marta hiding the truth adventure and then at the very end, it like turns back into a murder mystery because we right. like get little clues along the way that something else has gone on. Right. Yeah. I, w- I would say there's like you said, there's two points. I would say there's three points. It's the first point to where we're trying to figure out, you know, who killed Harlan. Then it's a point of like Martha trying to hide her tracks like Marlon asked her to do. Yeah. And then it's uh, Marlon. You're actually innocent. Now let's figure out the real killer. Like you just said the three points, but like. I would say the end where Martha is trying to come clean and that's where Mr. Blanc kind of steps in and like, that's the third, that's the third when Mr. Blanc steps in and like basically calls the family a bad family and how they, how dare they point fingers at, um, Martha. The, the, the hole inside the donut inside of a larger donut. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, it like really just throws a curveball at you when for, like at least an hour of the movie there's no reason not to believe that marta did it i was like oh no we we saw her do it we know that she's the killer and then later on you're like oh shit there's more going on here there's an there's an extra donut hole (laughs) right and i think that was such a good fucking twist the fact that she thought that she had basically given him an overdosage of a tranquilizer basically of morphine morphine and then finding out that she you know first you see her as like in the light of like she did her job terribly blah blah blah. yeah but then you find out like she actually did it properly because of her nursing training her skills 
Yeah. So she didn't even read the 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 the, the words. She just you know looked at the liquid yeah. solution, saw how clear or murky it was, and went off of that. Yeah. Um. But when I found that out, like I was super sad. The fact that you know Harlan actually did commit suicide. Yeah. Although he didn't have to. And that's the other thing is like you can see exactly how he definitely like you can see how everyone in the family sort of fits together because they're all super, super dramatic in their own way. And right. like the same thing goes for Harlan. Like he if, had he just let her call the ambulance, he would have been fine. But of course, because he's so dramatic, he's like, no, I'm going to make you do all of these steps so you don't get found out. And then I'm going to cut my own throat. Right. It's like, OK, well. <laughs> no right yeah he he had to die in the most traumatic way too of yeah. like slitting his corded artery so that blood can squirt everywhere like that's insane <laughs> yeah i also like they um there's like uh, like i was saying last time with like catching more as you like watching it the second time the amount of like little breadcrumbs that are sprinkled throughout the movie like hinting at stuff is like absolutely wild like i noted i noted um like four or five things here and i'm i'm almost certain i didn't catch everything but like in the beginning um harlan specifically says he's like oh like talking about ransom he's like that that boy like doesn't pay any attention he can't even tell the difference between a movie prop and a real knife right and at the end they use the prop yeah. knife not the real right. knife or then when um when we see Marta like climbing up the trellis and then the um Nana, the Harlan's mom, says, Oh, Ransom, you're back again. And like when it happens, you're just like, Oh, it's just like this like crazy old woman and she's probably a little blind, so maybe she's just mistaken. But then we find out that like, no, she actually did see Ransom earlier. Right. But it's just like small things like that are like during the interviews in the beginning um there's one detail that never gets explained which is that meg was woken up at three o'clock in the morning by the dogs barking and they never really talk about that until back again at the end we see mm -hmm. that and you, you can kind of catch it along the way because when we see marta going back to the house the dogs come up to her and they're just like sniffing her and wagging their tails and stuff but then right. when ransom shows up and like later on before the uh before the will reading as soon as he steps out of his car the the dogs start like super intense barking at him and so right. you're like oh they were barking earlier so maybe that's like it's a like tiny little hints like that yeah yeah or I, I, the, i'd love yeah. that hint dropping that they had yeah i thought it was it was great and like the the letter that he wrote to linda about um her husband cheating on her when he goes to find the letter, it looks blank. But then in an earlier scene, we see Linda looking at old letters from her dad. And you can see all of the letters have like burn marks on them, which hints that the, the letter is written with invisible ink. Oh, that makes sense. Yes, yeah, you didn't catch that one. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. But uh, just little things like that. Yeah. What great details. I mean, this Harlan character that they displayed him out to be was really the depiction of apparently how brilliant his you know murder mystery books were yeah and like the family was saying the whole time like they think that you know this is just another one of his books and then there's going to be all of a sudden like the big reveal which happened at the very end yeah and i just think it's funny that arlen didn't plan any any of that to happen no um his his killer basically is the one that you know got all the balls moving and whatnot so i, I just think it's it's funny that, you know, the family helped in like this big old murder mystery case that kind of resembled Harlan's books, but like as a real murder yeah. mystery. And it's Harlan's also book. like, I mean, just like any good murder mystery, and this speaks again to the the writing talent of Ryan Johnson is a, everyone in the movie is suspicious. And we find out throughout yeah. the movie that they're they're all suspicious for different reasons, but like everyone has something to lie about whether it's like the the one person cheating on his wife or like the person didn't want it to be known that his dad had fired him right before the the party or like things like that and just like all of these different things that happened and um right they're just like everyone is lying all the time and not only to the police and 
Detective Blanc, but also, like, everyone is lying to Marta, and I feel like that's another one of those layers that I feel like the first time you watch the movie, everyone feels very sincere, but then you, you like, you notice it a lot more, like, everyone the entire time is, like, no one really cares about her, and especially with, like, it's obvious that no one in that family actually knows where she's from because every time they bring it up, they they say a different country. LOL, no way. Like I, I think at one point, uh, Ransom is like, "Oh, the the Brazilian nurse," and then um, Linda is like, "Oh no, she's from Uruguay." And then someone else mentions like, um, I, "I don't know," but they just like every time they try to talk about where she's from, they <laughs> say a different country because none of them actually know. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you you kind of get that feeling for the family the farther into the movie you get of how yeah. shallow each person is. Yeah. Especially when that one chick, what's her fucking name? Meg. Meg. Yeah. Meg, like, calls her. Yeah. After she's basically given all the money of the will, everything, and basically asks her to give the money back and, yeah, you know, all that stuff. And, like, the, the second time, I think even the first time, I felt very... I think the camera angle they chose was interesting because. Oh yeah. When she like steps in and the, um, you see the light go over her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, that. And then like, of course, like when I'm watching that, I think that the family is there. That's like my mind already going like one step ahead kind of thing. Yeah. And then it pans out. And of course, like the whole family is yeah. like sitting there, like waiting for her to, you know, tell her this and that. Yeah. But I'm think, just kind of like, you think that phone call is sincere. And then she right. asks about the money. She yeah. hangs up. That's when you know, like, oh, she was bullshitting. And then you see the full family view of it. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus. And they're all just, like, like standing there all watching like, her make this phone call. Yeah, they're all like, oh, like, okay, what'd she say? What'd she say? Is she going to give us the money? Like, it's just yeah, crazy. It's, just, it's wild how, I mean, like you said, even watching it through the first time, like, you, the farther you get into the movie, the more you figure out that the whole family is full of shit. But it's interesting watching it a second time when you know they're full of shit from the beginning. And then even like stuff towards the beginning of the movie, you can like you can see the fakeness of it. Right. Yeah. I think the I mean, obviously, the only legit person towards her was Arlen. Yeah. And then also Mr. Blanc, because I, I think it's interesting that he knew the whole time since the first time he talked to her mm -hmm. that she was basically the killer slash well, not the killer, but like, like he knew she, she was, was involved. involved. Yeah. Yeah. She was involved in his killing, although she wasn't telling him the full truth. But Mr. Blanc had enough insight into her person, her personality to know that there's more to this than just, you know, the surface level what you can see kind of yeah. thing. Um, and I just think, yeah, I think Mr. Blanc to me was by far the best character in the movie. Um, to me personally, also like by far the best actor. And but one thing that I couldn't ever explain slash put my finger on is at the beginning when Mr. Blanc was sitting in the back behind the detectives and the state trooper. Yeah. Um, when they were doing the interviews, he would like hit a piano key. Yeah. Every now and then. Like, what was that about? Do you know? I I I didn't when I watched it, but uh we might we might have a trivia fact about that later. So uh Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> hold on to that. Yeah, like that's that's like one of those things that I just never I, I couldn't get my finger on like why, yeah. but we may find out, I guess. <laughs> Sick. Um, another thing is speaking of back to you mentioned that you thought Daniel Craig was your favorite actor, I think. And I mean, like I said earlier, I think everyone did a great job, but right. yeah. I think the most, I guess, well, not really that surprising, but like the most out of character performance was probably from Chris Evans, because like, obviously up until this point, it's like fucking literally Captain America, like the most perfect, sincere person. <laughs> and then in this movie, he's like a complete asshole. And I feel like he does a really good job of being a douchebag. <laughs> He does. He does. He was a total Chad. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think he went in on that role and like the way that he was just smug. Yeah. And just so calm and relaxed, but still an asshole. Was spot yeah. And on. he just like walks up into the house and he's like, like calling out everyone in the family. And then when, when they find out that everything got left to Marta, he just laughs at them and walks away. 
right like he just right. seriously does not give a single shit about anyone else in the family no but i think that was also like part of his plan you know like him laughing like that shows to martha that he doesn't really care that much and so like when he pulls up with his car she like trusted him enough to jump in because he was kind of like the black black sheep yeah oh well that that's another thing speaking of that scene i noticed i literally it, like i Unless you're looking for it, you may not pay attention, but it like helps with the feeling of the scene is there's like a a shot where after after the family finds out that Marta is going to inherit everything and then they are like all of a sudden like start swarming her and they're like follow her out of the house. And when you see her walk out of the house, there's a steady cam shot and you see like this like still shot and you see her come out of the house and then the second the family follows her out of the house it switches from a steady cam shot to handheld and it like gets all up in their faces and it like it, it sort of like builds the the sort of uh, uh frantic nature of like what's happening with Marta but in is is happening in the film as well yeah like the the anxious feeling that's how i felt yeah like she was but that just like i think being, that's an amazing shot yeah i agree like the the feeling of being claustrophobic slash anxious slash confused slash all that stuff that you said yeah i mean it builds it really does and then he pulls up in his beamer and she just yeah. hops in his car and like you know lo and behold of course her car is fucking dead and then you know that leaves me also to think like did he mess with her car somehow you know why did it start all of a sudden yeah, I guess as a way to like force her to go and talk with him. I bet right. he did because he left before any of them. Yeah. And he also came later than any of them. So he could have fucked with her car that was sitting in the front. That's true. Yeah, because he knew he knew before the will reading that she was going to get everything. Right. Right. Yeah. So he already had everything planned out basically from the arson um, to yeah. befriending her to killing the person that knew it was him. Yeah. Kind of thing. So there's a lot that went into that. And, um, oh, another thing is his, um, so he has this like big, like silk purple scarf and it's like, I, I remember seeing it and I was like, damn, that's like a really nice scarf. Like <laughs> it looks, it looks good on him. <laughs> and then I looked it up and I, it's not that specific scarf isn't for sale anymore. So I couldn't find an exact price, but I found the company that made that scarf and they have similar scarves, and all of them are between three and four hundred dollars. Jesus, so that's an expensive ass scarf. That scarf better feel like I don't even know. It better feel like God is around you. <laughs> Damn, that is an expensive ass straight piece of material. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. But I, I mean, think granted, I, they they did talk about his style in the movie too, of like yeah. you know, how he cared about style so much. So it made well, sense that he was yeah. pampered up more than anyone And I else. remember, I remember seeing an interview where they talked about like the, the idea behind all of his outfits was that he has a lot of really nice things, but he treats everything like shit. So like we see even uh, later when he's talking to Marta in the restaurant, he has like this really nice cable knit sweater, but there's like frayed edges and there's like a couple holes in it. Like he spends a lot of money on stuff, but then he doesn't really take care of anything. Oh, damn. And they said that he has never had a job in his life either, right? Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. When they said that, my mind just kind of went blank of like, so you're just like handed thousands and thousands of dollars to live? <laughs> That's insane. Um, yeah. And then I also, I really liked um, like the reveal at the end when um, Detective Blanc he has like this whole long monologue where he's like, this is how it went down. And I just think the um, Daniel Craig's performance there was also especially nice. I think he did a good job. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a bad scene in the whole movie. For sure. Yeah. Me, me either. You know, like I, I, I think, honestly, I did not have a single negative note for this movie. I, I don't either. Um, Let me see. Actually, hold on. Nope. Nothing. Nothing yeah. bad. This is this is an A plus movie for sure. Yeah, the only like annoying thing that I saw was when Martha and Mr. Blanc were like, you know, going around the grounds of the house trying yeah. to find clues and whatnot. And then Martha, like, I don't know how Mr. Blanc missed it the first time, but there's like this giant, you know, like the part that broke off of the house. Yeah. And then she like throws it and then the dog like chases after it. And then of course the fucking dog brings it straight back <laughs> after like a while. 
to uh, Mr. Blanc. And I'm like, of course this would happen. You know, like, of course. Yeah. That was kind of an eye roll moment for me where it was like, I mean, that was, that was a setup for sure. For of sure. like how to get Mr. Blanc to see it in like a funny way of like the dog just wants to play fetch. Yeah. It was like completely harmless, but it happened. Those were gorgeous dogs too. Oh, they were. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were running around the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I think the shot and like the whole scene of when the family found out what was said in the will and how like freaked out they were and how aggressive they turned. Yeah. I think that was a fantastic scene of how when people lose something that they really just depend on and never counted on losing or. Yeah. And you can just, see they like there was when he was reading the will in the beginning, you can see there's like not a single doubt in their mind. Like every single one of them had one thing that they were hoping for. Like right. uh, the uh, Walter, like when he mentioned the the book company, it like cuts to a shot of him and he's just like sitting there smiling. Like he knows he's going to get the book company. And then um, all of the money, um, Tony Collette's character uh, with uh, uh, I don't remember her character's name, but her daughter is Meg and she had the the money yeah. for her daughter to go to college. And right. then um, the house was going to be left to Linda. And it, it, like every time he mentions something in the will, you see like one group of people be like, oh, yeah, that thing's going to be mine. And right. then when they find out none of it is theirs, they're like, hold on a second. Yeah, like. Is, is that a po- I mean, that's obviously a possibility, right? To where like you can just leave your shit to like people that aren't in, even in your family, right? Bro, people have left belongings to animals before. Really? Yeah. You can literally do anything in your will. Insane. I That's crazy. But yeah, I, I had no idea that Mr. Blanc was that. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Harlan was that rich. Yeah. Like $60 million in literally in just money. That's not well, I think that assets. I think that was money and was that not including assets? No, like I think it was completely like they said, wait, was it with I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they said like that money's in like different banks here and there. And then of course they had like his house and his cars and whatnot. Uh I don't I don't remember. But maybe it was like all of his but like sixty million dollars? That's a lot. Yeah, that is crazy. Like I can't imagine being in Martha's place at that at that point in time. And then like something like that happening, which is crazy because like she got so much publicity from that when she woke up at her house and like her sister was like, oh, my God, are we rich now? There's like the whole news crew outside and all that. Right. But then like the rest of the movie, we never see anything about that ever again. Oh, that was that was another thing as well. Um, The um, when she gets the the blackmail letter, like, I don't know. There's just like the way that they put things in this movie to where like you just like gloss over it with your mind and then you see it later when it's important. You're like, Oh shit. How did I not notice that? But when she gets the blackmail letter, the bottom half of the letter is ripped off and you're just like, you don't even think about it. And then later you find out it's because the letter was sent to ransom. And then he ripped the bottom of the letter off before he sent it to Marta. Right. Right. I noticed it, but I just, it just didn't make sense. I mean, I was like, I I was like, okay, things that you just ignore. Yeah. But I mean, the the movie does a great job of that. And that's why I'm saying like the second time watching it, it was a lot more interesting because you, you knew right at that point in time, like what happens where, and like, it just makes more sense. Yeah. It streamlines it like tenfold. So yeah, I think it's, if anyone is listening to this, that hasn't seen it, see it. And if you have seen it, see it again, because I agree, it's still good. Yeah, it, it's still good. And I'm not like one of those people that would usually watch a movie a second time. Like usually I'm one and done. Right. But this one, dude, I could probably watch this one a third time and still like find yeah, out. There'd, yeah, there'd probably be still more shit in there that we didn't see. <laughs> exactly. Like it, it's loaded with things, although it doesn't come to you as if it's loaded with things. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's like like back burner information that you just they don't want to shove down your throat, but it's there if you want to see it. I agree. Good stuff yeah one thing that i didn't like i think though um is when fran was in that room and like uh she was sitting in that chair yeah and martha kind of like walked up to her and then turned on the phone camera uh phone light and there was like this big ass fucking spider on her face (laughs) yeah i was like what like she literally just got poisoned maybe an hour or two prior to that how is there already a fat fucking spider on her face like that? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's in an old abandoned like uh, dry cleaner shop. So if there was already spiders in the room, 
if she hasn't been moving for a couple hours, I can see how one would crawl onto her. Really? Like, I don't know. I feel like that placement was just bullshit. Like, they were definitely trying to scare the audience, like put a disgusting spider straight in her eye. Yeah, and- yeah, for sure. But like, I mean, I've had I've had spiders get on me while I'm just sitting at my desk. So what the fuck? Is- Kill them, bro. Kill them. No, of course not. Yeah. You're over here like, and this is Charlie. And that one is Xavier. Like, I'm not going to let it crawl on me. I'll like swipe it away. But like, I don't I don't mess with spiders in our house. They can stay. I don't know, man. If I see a spider, it is a goner as fast as possible. Spiders are good for the environment. They keep more aggressive bugs out. I mean, that's true, but they can stay on the outside. I don't don't want them inside with me, bro. I'm just scared of being I've been bit by a spider before. And well, just like catch and release, like put a little put a little cup over it and then throw it outside yeah well they're just really fast and gross looking so (laughs) i'd rather not deal with any of that and they can like you know like their webs are just too sticky so like if you throw it out then it's just it's still in the cup and then like nah it's just too much there are too many factors that goes into catch and releasing a fucking spider i've gotten and released plenty of spiders it's easy have you ever been bitten by a spider i think so I don't remember or, like seeing the spider on me, but I had a bite one time that I was like pretty sure was a spider bite. Okay, did it hurt? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's like because it's definitely not the most painful bug bite I've ever had. I it, for me it was, dude. I have a there's like where the spider bit me. It's like on my leg, like near my knee area. Yeah. There's like an indentation in my skin now, and the skin is white in that area. That's crazy. Yeah. Like. I was riding my little motorcycle like it was a 49 cc back when I was like maybe 14 and I was riding driving it to my buddy's house and I think because we parked it outside like in our shed yeah I think a spider like crawled underneath the tank and like was living there and I pulled it out and like my knees like hugged the tank and I think it just came onto my knee and bit me did you see it yeah I saw it yeah and I can't tell you I was I was it was in the middle of me driving and I like got this sharp pain look down see this thing on me and i fucking swat at it kill it but dude that was probably one of the most painful shits and after that spiders and me just don't match we are not a we are not a fit what if it's a different kind of spider if it's like a daddy long legs i'm fine like dude i've been i've been like the caves you know like uh, yeah. cave expeditions where you have to like walk parallel down like this super narrow cavern and there's like hundreds and tens of hundreds of spiders everywhere and they're yeah. like falling on your hard hat and they're like crawling all over you. I'm fine with that. That's fine. But if it's like a different type of spider than that, fuck that. Nah, nah, I'm out. Okay. They are dying. Well, if if you ever if you ever need my help getting rid of a spider, I can come catch it for you. <laughs> I mean, I can take care of spiders. Like, don't worry. They'll they'll be taken I mean, yeah, care of. I'm with, just not going to keep them alive. without killing them. Well, you're gonna have to move to Colorado if you want to save some spiders' lives. <laughs> I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save all the spiders' lives. Quite honestly, though, like I haven't had any spiders yet in my apartment, so, you know, they're behaving well. They know my boundaries. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's spiders and cockroaches. I'll just kill on the spot. So sad. Not for the cockroaches. Wait, do you- I, don't, I don't give a shit about cockroaches, but yeah, I don't know, man. Them biting me changed me. <laughs> um, I, I can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> I think this movie is 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 a real good one. Yeah, I I would say I have like maybe two more things, two or three. Um, I think that Martha played her role brilliantly of, you know, covering her tracks of, you know, wiping the camera footage from uh, covering her mud tracks that were there. I think on the fly, Martha did a great job. That was that was another funny moment is when she's driving away and trying to remember what he said. She's like, oh, shit, did he say before the statue or after the statue? And then you can hear the voice in her head and it goes be after four (laughs) yeah (laughs) and she was like well fuck i don't remember and then i think she 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 chose the wrong one right yeah yeah um i think that like those scenes with her were great i think that when martha went to meet at 1209 with fran that is what I was referring to earlier of when Blanc was in the car and he had like some iPod headphones and he was like singing to a song yeah. and he like didn't hear the ambulance like arrive until like it was right on him. And he was like, yeah. oh, like what's going on? I thought that was like a funny moment yeah. seeing seeing him like singing a song after like we like, you know, during the movie, he was like stone cold, like super. Yeah, it was also so interesting. Like they 
keep they do a good job of keeping everyone on their edge because even after the whole like the car chase and then they like they catch up with them and marta gets out of the car and she like you get this feeling like oh no they like they know and now she's caught and then they just arrest ransom instead right which doesn't make any sense really but because i think um what was the reason that they had given they they explained why they thought that he did it but i don't remember right now i I don't remember that one right now either yeah um but I, i also like like the heart to heart moment um where Blanc basically knew the whole time and he said like you're a good person yeah oh well that you're a per good person quote came when she when when she asked or some i don't know exactly remember how it came up but something about the money and he was like look she asked him i think she asked mr Blanc, like hey like what do i do about the money i think the family needs help he was like well don't ask my opinion uh, i think you'll follow your heart yeah and and then you see like the family outside and she like walks on the balcony and she has a a mug in her hand that says like my house and something else. Yeah. It I says, think that was like hilarious. We see that same mug in the beginning. It says my house, my rules, my coffee. Yeah. 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 I think it's great that they, she used that mug at the very end again to really tie it in. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, yeah, and I you, think, you sort yeah. of see, cause that's how they, um that's how they end up or how she ends up, I guess winning and not getting framed for murder because they even mention it how when she found fran drugged if she had just sat there and let her die then it would have looked like she did it right but since she called 911 and got help that's what like her being a good person is what shifted the focus back on to ransom right right and then she played her cards really well at the end where she basically made him think that Fran was alive. Yeah. When the hospital called. And she had and to like then, hold in her puke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like held it in her puke and he confessed to everything. And then and then she puked straight in his face. Oh, my God. That was the chunkiest vomit. Yeah. I was I not ready for ate, that. <laughs> yeah. He kind of let that thing rip. And it was like dripping down his face. And I was like, oh, I can't even imagine the smell. Yeah. No, thanks. Awful. But yeah, and you, yeah, that's another think... thing that like is kind of, uh, I guess, uh, hinted at is the like she obviously because um, even in the beginning when she's playing Go with Harlan and he's like, how do you keep beating me? And she says, because you're playing to win. I'm just playing to make a pretty pattern. Yeah. And that's like that's like sort of her like the way she handles the murder situation as well as like uh, Ransom had all this shit set up trying to like plan everything out so that he could win the situation but uh marta was just doing what she thought was right right true oh that's a good one yeah and because she always beat harlan more she she beat harlan more than he did yeah so i guess she won the whole game now yeah wow that's great all right but overall ready to move on to trivia yeah 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 i was just i was just gonna say like overall i think the whole movie was just so solid and like oh, there's sure. more we could talk about but 100 percent. you know then we're just gonna get to like the nitty-gritty of it you know yeah it's a great movie we actually have quite a bit of trivia today i found some good shit good and you'll also answer my question from earlier <laughs> we will all start with that one actually so we can get that um let me find it here Okay, so it says when when Benoit Blanc is first seen by the audience, he's sitting in the study listening to Lieutenant Elliot question the Thromby family members, and he plays the same note on the piano at seemingly random intervals, but it is actually not random. After Blanc hits the piano key, Lieutenant Elliot always asks the same question, what time did you arrive at the house? The piano key is Blanc's way of signaling Elliot to ask that question. Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. That's not at all what I thought it was. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, this says it was Don Johnson who played uh, Richard, who is Linda's husband. Uh, it was time. Don Johnson's idea for his character to hand his empty plate to Marta as if she was a maid during the immigration conversation. Oh, Lord. Just adding an extra layer of being a pompous asshole <laughs> they're like yeah. sitting there like talking about like no it like we we care about legal immigrants he's like marta come over here and like talking to her and then in the middle of the conversation just hands her a plate and expects her yeah. to take it he, although she's like a fucking nurse like right oh 
Uh, in the commentary, director Ryan Johnson described Chris Evans' entrance when the dogs were barking around him uh, as some of the best acting he's ever seen because, as he said, dogs love Chris Evans and Chris Evans loves dogs. So him, pretend, him pretending to be annoyed by the dogs, <laughs> Ryan Johnson said that was some of the best acting he's ever seen. I'm dead. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I think it's also impressive that he got the dogs to start barking. I mean, yeah, those dogs were very well trained. Yeah, like, can you tell a dog to just bark? Like, yeah, I don't you know. Can, is you can a... train dogs to act aggressive without actually being aggressive. Mm, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Impressive. Uh, Ryan Johnson contemplated cutting Blanc's donut speech, but Daniel Craig convinced him that it was good, and watching the actor deliver it sold him on keeping the entire thing. <laughs> the donut speech. I think that was a good part of the movie. Like, it really, it drew a picture to people who maybe couldn't figure out what was going on and why. Yeah. Uh, the portrait of Harlan Thromby was digitally added in post-production because the painting was not finished until after filming wrapped. Bro, I knew it. It didn't look very crisp. <laughs> I was going to say, like, it, it honestly, it looked CGI. Did you notice that too, or was it just me? I think it, it looked pretty normal to me. Really? I don't know, man. It kind of looked like a print almost. It's strange. Yeah, I guess it, it looked more printed than painted, but it yeah. I feel like it still looked like it was actually there. Uh, that's a that's a good fact right there. I like that. Uh, Patton Oswalt contacted Ryan Johnson after the film opened and asked if the needle drop of Gordon Lightfoot's Sundown was an intentional reference. Uh, apparently, the song is allegedly about a groupie that Lightfoot had experienced uh, named Kathy Evelyn Smith who is best known for being the person who gave John Belushi a fatal injection of heroin and cocaine in 1982. Ryan said, Patton, who is brilliant in his thinking in terms of 3D chess, was like, was that a crazy reference to Marta? Wait, so was it? I I don't think so. Oh, you don't I think, think so? I don't think so. From the way that Ryan talked about it, it's just like, this just happened to fit really well, but it's like this... That's like four levels deep if you're like, I'm going to put a song in this movie, which like is maybe about a person who drugged someone. Oh, yeah, that, that's too that's too big of a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Too many points but, to connect. I mean, it's yeah. an interesting connection still for sure. True. Yeah. I mean, who knows, quite honestly, like where they get the inspiration from yeah. while they're, you know, scene writing or cast or, you know, all that stuff. Uh, Ransom's car is a 1972 BMW 3.0 CSI. Oh, nice. A 3.0 for 1978? That's... 72. 72? That's a nice car. Yeah. That is a nice car. Um, though it is never revealed where the Cabrera family immigrated from, Anna de Armas, who plays Marta, and Marlene Forte, who plays Marta's mom, were both born in Cuba. Oh. This says, uh, while filming the big reveal at the end of the film... Ryan Johnson was surprised to discover that Daniel Craig had completely memorized the last 30 pages of the script, most of which are a monologue delivered by his character. Johnson ended up altering the way he shot the scenes, favoring long takes instead of shorter cuts, because he found that Craig's performance became better and better the longer each take became. Wait, so Craig did better when he had basically his flow? Yeah. That, so instead of doing saying? like short little scenes of him doing his monologue, they just like let the camera roll and Daniel Craig just like did the entire monologue or uh, longer chunks of the monologue at least. Wow, that's impressive because he had memorized it all. I mean, right. that's kind of what they're supposed to do though, no? I thought that's what kind of acting was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like I don't think anyone would expect you to memorize 30 pages. That's fucking you, true, like, yeah. Memorize a little bit and then you memorize the next little bit. Wow, yeah. Dude, I... uh little fun fact also for you i i don't know if you I think you know but back when i was in high school my friends and i we did like friends remakes yeah and like i mean like as fully as their actors and like i had to memorize the lines and shit and bro it is so difficult not bad it is so difficult so props to him <laughs> uh when ransom is reading over the blackmail letter meant for marta there are several obscured issues of the new yorker visible on his coffee table Earlier in the film, Linda and Joni reference the New Yorker article about Blanc's career, further hinting at Ransom being the one who hired Blanc to investigate the death. Wait, I don't understand how that ties in. So earlier in the movie, 
they Linda and Joni had mentioned that they saw an article in the New Yorker about Benoit Blanc and how he was this amazing investigator. And then later oh. in Ransom's home, we see a couple issues of the New Yorker. So it makes sense that like he would have seen the same article and that's how he thought to hire Blanc as the investigator. Blanc. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, Noah Segan, who plays uh, the state trooper. I don't remember his character's name, uh, but he said when talking about the scene where he is supposed to grab ransom by the arm, he said, I could not find purchase. His arm muscle was much larger than my hand. <laughs> that's when you know like oh dude that's funny <laughs> he was just too buff bro i couldn't grab anywhere i literally couldn't grab him <laughs> <laughs> holy smokes uh, during the car chase scene this is our, our last fact during the car chase scene ransom calls marta baby driver due to her reckless driving uh ryan johnson felt that there was no way they were going to top anything in that movie so he decided to go the opposite route and deliver a silly car chase instead yeah it was a funny one i, I like you, that she, like you know she was like this little shit car yeah that could it only was go like, like 55, max speed 60, 60 yeah <laughs> yeah but then like honestly like they made out her driving to be pretty good like in the city when she was taking all those tight corners and yeah you know cutting off cars but then like she put her car in park and then all of a sudden the cops were there. <laughs> have you seen Baby Driver? I have not. No, that's that's also a really good movie. There are some sick ass car stunts in that movie. Damn. No, I haven't seen that. But yeah, um, right. I just like the idea that they're like, there's no way our car chase is going to be better than any of those car chases. So we'll, we're not going to try and do a serious car chase. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. good, though. Like it fit the aura of the movie. Yeah, I well, agree. Yeah. So yeah, that is our trivia, and that is our review of Knives Out. Definitely, definitely, definitely go watch this movie if you haven't. And if you've only seen it once and you kind of remember what it's about, um, even if you didn't like it, you know, back in the day, rewatch it and let us know what you think, because I'm telling you, you will see like at least four, five, six different things. And, you know, you might actually change your own opinion about the movie. For sure, for sure. So for all of you listeners, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. Tell your friends and family about us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CashVanPod. If you want to send us a message, you can do so on either of those platforms, or you can send an email to CasualFanaticPodcast at gmail.com. Luca, what kind of messages can they send us? Man, they can send us anything from, hey, like, I just listened to your podcast, and I think that these might be like really cool interesting facts that you guys didn't mention that you might want to share with your viewers next time um you guys can come with us with any suggestions of movies um referrals of wanting to be to be on the show possibly um to you know just basically a casual fan shout out of like hey man i like what you're doing here and if you want to be you know if you want to hear your name on the show um and we can give you a shout out just let us know good shit good shit <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, time to get wrecked. Time to get wrecked, baby. All right, but one. I think it's I think you go first this time, yeah? Um my yeah. last suggestion for getting wrecked was for people to get their covid shots before Christmas time, which I hope everyone took and took advantage of. Honestly, I think we were supposed to get wrecked before all of that other stuff, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> no worries. It'll be okay. Um all right, my wreck for today is going to be hmm. i'll be honest i didn't have one prepared give me a second <laughs> oh no worries then i'll go first i hinted to at the beginning that you know what i did today was my buddy had an opening here in uh, colorado in the denver well it's actually in aurora but it's close to denver it's like you know 15 minutes away if that but if you guys are ever in town to denver colorado i highly suggest you guys going to it's called myungrang korean hot dog and it's in aurora colorado um, the spelling is M-Y-U-N-G-R-A-N-G based Korean hot dog. Very, very, very good. I mean, these, you guys can just look it up. The hot dogs are phenomenal um, and they're extremely cheap and they are filling. Uh, highly suggested. The address is 2623 South Parker Road, Aurora, Colorado, 80014. And that is my get wrecked. Dang. All right. Nice. All right. Well, uh, my wreck for today is going to be um something called dream booth which is a uh a sort of i guess 
program, but it's not really a program, but it's it's a way to insert yourself into AI generated images. Oh, and that's it, what it was. Yeah, there's a, a bit of a learning curve. So um, it's it, it's not the easiest thing in the world. But if if anyone wants to take the time to figure out how to use it and download all the proper stuff, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And I mean, they can always email our show if they have any questions or if you guys did any cool things with that, send it to us. Yeah. If you guys take on our Rex, send them to us. That's another thing you can send. All right. Now, this has been Casual Fanatic. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.